Hey guys, welcome back. Um, as promised from the studio, I wanted to take you out to an actual job site. And I wanted to show you not only the importance, but also a couple tools of the trade that are very easily accessible. You don't have to we'll spend hundreds of dollars. Um, and I also want to teach you a little bit about conceptual measurements versus architectural measurements and how it comes to play you know, in your project. Uh, I was taught decades ago, I was taught to be as accurate as possible. And then when you end up actually doing it, you may take a little more accurate measurements for things like building arbors, which we're not covering in these modules, um, concrete pours. So you have accurate, actual and accurate measurements when you're going to buy your concrete. You know, if you're a half a yard off because you didn't measure correctly, and you pour your slab and you're a half a yard short, you're gonna pay a tremendous amount to get a short load brought out to you. Or, God forbid, you go and try to finish it with sat concrete versus a mixer concrete. They're not gonna look the same. So accuracy is very important. Now let me tell you about this in the design phase. What I have always done is I have always used conceptual measurements when it came to the design. And conceptual is as accurate as you can get it you know, down to within a foot. So if you have 12 feet, six inches worth of measurement, you can make the decision either to round up or round down to an equal, you know, even measurement, 12 foot or 13 foot. Um, because when it comes to the actual design layout, it's not as important at that point. You can get really uh, down to the nitty gritty, like I said, when you're measuring out for other stuff. But let's go over a couple tools of the trade and then we're going to actually get out here and do some measuring at this job site for our clients and we're going to show you how accurate is accurate now we're up in the rocky mountains beautiful beautiful spot in the summertime in july of 2020 and we are safe away from everybody and everything and we have a client up here that is in need of some design work and later on a phase build out as far as patios and irrigation and plantings uh, and you'll see parts of those modules later on in the in the show so right now let's go over design what I do when I used to get on site and what I want you to do when you go out to your front yard or your backyard is just have some simple tools I have a measuring tape this one happens to be a Stanley it happens to be 30 feet long uh, you're, if you're really small yard, maybe you don't need a 30 footer. Maybe you only need a, you know, a 25 or a 15. I like it because it can extend out and you can get some decent measurements without it breaking. And a little more accurate that way. The other thing I love to use is a roll of tape. Now this is not my favorite. I used to have one with the big wheel on it. Used to go across lawns and everything. This is what I happen to have right now but it still does a good job and it's still accurate to within a couple inches. So this really helps and you can go along your fence lines, you can even collapse them down so that you can go along the wall if you don't happen to have one of these. Uh, and they're pretty darn accurate. I, I mean, I've taped it off and then I've rolled it off and they're within a couple of inches. So remember the conceptual versus architectural measurements. So roll of tape, a measuring tape. I like to use a clipboard. You don't have to have a clipboard. I just like writing on a rigid surface. It just helps, it helps me. And as I'm getting older, you know, I need to kind of be a little more careful in my writing so I can read it later on when I'm back at the design table. Uh, I generally always use a 11 by 17 legal type of pad. Um, if the yard is not that big, then I'll have places down below to write notes and scribble little uh, pay attention to's, that kind of thing. But in this case, we're doing the backyard only. And this property is right around a half acre and the yard is pretty good size. And you can see what I've already put on there. I've put on the dwelling, I've put on the fence lines, I've put on where they have a vegetable garden already that they're keeping and sheds, that kind of stuff. It's already on there. But what I do is I roughly place them on paper with the exact measurements that I need. And then when I get back to the design table, I'll transfer those more accurate measurements onto the design itself. So it's a little out of scale and it's a little, this isn't quite as close to the house as it looks, 
but when you get there, you'll figure, oh, I gotta go 48 feet from the edge of the house and that's the front edge of the gar vegetable garden. It helps a lot. So let's stop here for just a minute and rejoin me over on the side and I'll show you the simplicity that uh, goes into landscape measurements and when you're in your design module, how accurate you really have to be. So stay with me for just a second. Okay, back on your accurate measurements in a conceptual standpoint, not an architectural standpoint. So here we are on the north side of the house. This happens to be the garage side. And all we're gonna do is you're gonna take your roll of tape or you take your tape measure. If you have a helper, fantastic. You know, it just makes it more of a team effort. But most of the time I'm accustomed to working by myself. So for here, we're just gonna roll the side of the, the garage and I'll show you how accurate it really is. So when we did it, it's 2311, and it's a 24 foot deep garage, according to their house plans. So that's within an inch, not too bad, right? So when you're doing your, you're doing your measurements, you could write down 24 feet on your design. It's not gonna make that much of a difference in the beginning. Where it'll make a difference is if you were doing a sidewalk here, or you had a planting bed, and then a sidewalk, and then grass, and then a fence line, you're gonna to wanna to know about that sidewalk measurements a little more accurately so that you can order up the right amount of concrete when it comes to that part of it. So let's tuck around another corner and I'll show you how it becomes a little easier when you do it more often. And when you do it, especially on the back side of this house where it's kind of choppy, the, the actual measurements are important. So right back as soon as we move that camera. Okay, on the other side here, guys, we're on the back side of the garage here, and we have the master bedroom wall here. We have some steps. We have the back side of the house hose bib, and these are some of the things that you want to include if they're going to stay. If they are not going to stay, don't leave them in the design. In this particular case, these guys will be staying, as will the hose bib, so it will go into the design. However, it may be augmented as far as its location for convenience because where I'm standing right here on the back side of the garage and where the master bedroom is, this is probably gonna become a secondary patio. And because of that, we wanted to make some relatively accurate, accurate measurements. So what we do right in here is we'll measure, we'll put in where the door space is, We'll measure between the door and the wall, and then we're gonna measure the bump out here on the master bedroom. So I've already done that. What I wanna to convey to you is in this case, you could use your tape measure or your roll of tape, do it nice and easy, round it up or down to whatever you feel is necessary at this point, and move on. Don't get caught up in the quarter inch or inch measurements. It's not important at this point. So, as you can follow me down here, as the back of the dwelling progresses, this is the master bedroom, and it has another bump in here, which is only a couple of feet, but obviously that's staying, so you're gonna have to measure it. And then across the mudroom and the kitchen area, all staying, nothing is changing. And then we have the raised raised deck patio off of the back here. This is staying as well. We may take this color, transfer it onto the foundation there and make it a little more uniform. These colors may or may not change. We don't know at this point, but that's not gonna be applicable so much to our landscape design as it is some of our color coordination later on. And I'll talk to you about that in studio at the design table. So if I didn't get it across right now, Architectural measurements versus conceptual design measurements. Don't get caught up in the details at this point. Now, if you can follow me around here, you'll see how deep this yard really is. A half acre lot in this day and age in a cityscape is kind of a rarity. But where we at, we happen to have a lot of depth and literally, guys, almost a blank canvas on which to work with it. And your coach here loves things like this because it means 
You don't have to rip a bunch of stuff out during the project. You have to know where your utilities are. You have to know what the customer or the client, or more importantly, you, what you want, and then decide what's going to design in and what are you going to design out. And the design out part, provided you stick with it, is going to be your roadmap to your finished product. So we're going <laughs> to plan our work and then we're going to work our plan. And that's how landscaping becomes a lot more easy and a lot less stressful. You're not staring at the ceiling at 2 a.m. going, oh my God, did I order enough? Did I get enough? Do I need more? Do I need less? You know, am I on budget? Your roadmap from the design to the actual project is gonna help alleviate some of those fears and those anxieties from everything. And if you're working, you know, if you're working to be a contractor, you're working to be a landscape designer, you won't stay up wondering, did I make did I make the right design? Is everything accurate? Double check your measurements, you know? Check it twice, cut it once type of thing. Well, here we're gonna double check our measurements and then when we go to put it to the design, I generally take a couple of things. I take my clipboard and the measurements that I wrote on and I also will have photographs of the project just to remind myself pictorially what it's going to look like now and how deep was that bump? Where exactly was that bump? Where was the shade shadow at two in the afternoon versus nine in the morning versus February versus August? All of these things come into play. The last thing I want to leave you with is direction. In this particular case, we have our project part of the house facing the east. Part of the project where we measure the garage is facing north. However, the way it's oriented in the afternoon, the hot afternoon, and all the way until the sun hits those mountains over there, it'll be in full blazing hot sun, even though it's on the north side. But that's here in July, come November, December, January, and February, that whole area over there will be nothing but shade. So I will tell you how to address that when we get to the design table. So. Thanks for this job site, little instruction, little tutorial. I hope it has helped. Now, back to the course. Talk to you later.